Yeah, my name is Gary Pace. I'm a welding engineer in CWI, and I decided to put together this uh, prep course, prep and study course for the CWI exam. Um, the key here is, and I, I rant on in this uh, presentation about, you know, things you need to look at and whatnot, but that's the basic gist of it is this module we don't cover anything on metallurgy or anything. This is just, you know, helping you realize that this test is probably going to take some time and it's probably not going to be really, really easy. Maybe it is. Maybe you're some kind of savant and you got photographic memory and you'll chew through this thing. Not an issue. There's a lot of people that take this test and have some difficulty passing it. And that's kind of the my audience here is kind of help those people develop a study plan and realize, hey, I need to get a bunch of books and, you know, not just this one book is going to get me through. And, you know, the overall scope of this, that this is like learning a language. This is like learning a culture. You know, we're not picking up a pamphlet on French and learning the French culture or learning Pashtun like that. No, it takes some time. You, you got to immerse yourself in the language, the culture, the vernacular, and understand what this test, what you're expected to do on this test. So that's kind of where philosophically I'm coming from. And, you know, I apologize beforehand. I use a couple of, you know, metaphors or analogies that are related to American football. If you don't understand American football, I'm sorry, but. Um, you could probably work your way through it and understand it anyway. So, but hopefully this, uh, prep and preparation and study course module will help you, you know, define what you need to learn and how you need to approach this test. Hello, my name is Gary Pace, uh, professional engineer, CWI out of Katy, Texas. There's my website. Not that there's a lot on there, but. Anyways, that's my contact information. This is the AWS recommended self-study um, list of documents. You can see it's a pretty good list of documents. Um, certification manual for welding inspectors, weld inspection handbook, D11, D11 code clinic reference manual, API 1104. You're not going to re need to read all of these because if you're taking it in 1104, you're obviously not going to need to delve into D1.1. Um, Weld Inspection Technology is an important book. The Welding Inspection Technology Workbook is important. Um, the Sample CWI Fundamentals Examination and Key are a good um, document to have. Um, standard and Welding Terms and Definitions. Standard symbols for welding, brazing, and non-destructive exam is another one. So I'm not going to read the whole list, which I've pretty much done there. But you can get an understanding that it's, there's a lot of documents that you should have or should have access to and dig through before you tackle this exam. Here's another few books, you know, the AWS Handbook Series, Guide for ex Visual Examination of Welds. Safety in welding and cutting and allied processes. That's a good one to dig through. Metric practice guide for the welding industry. Um, standard methods for mechanical testing of welds. And then specification for welding procedure and performance qualification, B2.1. is another good one to dig through. All right, when you take the CWI exam, there's going to be three parts to the exam. You've got part A, which is a two-hour, 150-question closed book test on welding fundamentals. There's going to be all kinds of questions on, you know, what does SMAW stand for? Um, what is the 70 and E7018 stand for? Things like that. Basic metallurgy, um, welding questions, and that's all covered in the welding technology workbook. And we're going to dig into that. Um, part B is a two-hour hands-on test of 46 questions that requires the test taker to use visual inspection tools and a sample code book. So you're going to go in there and look at a bunch of uh, plastic fillet welds and groove welds, and they're going to give you some weld inspection tools, and you're going to answer questions on those um, 
on those samples. So they're going to give you like a, a mock-up code, and you're going to have to disposition these welds based on the little um, the little code book they give you that's got inspection criteria and acceptance criteria. This is usually the one that trips everybody up. Um, part C is a two-hour open book test of 40 to 60 questions, and I took it on AWS D1.1, but a lot of people take it on API 1104. So it's open book. You tab your book. If you have a good understanding of your um, code that you're taking the test to, most people get their way through it. Um, but Part B usually seems to be the one that trips people up. Of the people that I've seen take the test and talk to, I have yet to s hear anybody say, yeah, I nailed Part A and Part B, but I flunked C. Or I failed Part A, but I got B and C. B is usually the tricky one. That being said, we're not going to get into Part B in this um, series of presentations. We're just going to grind through Part A hit metallurgy and just go on down the list so and try and give you some ideas on studying and how to study we might have some stuff on part c but for the most part this series of presentations is part a my my advice here is on the self-assessment of the body of knowledge that you have people come at this cwi exam from a lot of different directions you have some people, I, I'm an engineer, so I was working at the Hanford site when I took this. I was in and out of codes all the time, and I was doing a lot of weld inspection. Every day I went out and inspected, you know, 20 or 30 welds or whatever the number was. Every day I was looking at welds and then having to disposition them and, hey, we're cutting this out or no, we're not. So I had a lot of um, experience with the codes and the weld inspection when I took this. And then I took a, the guy I worked for gave a class to a bunch of us over the course of a few months. So my body of knowledge going into this was pretty strong. But I've known a couple other people that were, um, that were not engineers or were not inspectors that took the test. And they did well, but they had to do basically a self-assessment and think, what do I know about welding and what do I not know? And how am I going to attack things that I don't know? So um, you need to create a study plan is the first thing. And in doing that, you need to set up a, a schedule for study, which means you're going to need to study uh, a couple hours a, a night. Unless you're just some kind of brainiac that can... Um, you know, it has photographic memory and you're just going to blast through this, look at it the night before and go. It's probably not going to work for you. So you need to set up a, st uh, a study schedule. You need to find a, a quiet place in your home and make that the study place. Go in there, have your books, go in there and read. It's your garage, whatever. Whatever place you can set up where you've got all your documents and you can go and dig through this stuff and take some practice quizzes and... Um, just get down and dirty with it. Um, read, study, read, and read some more. This is going to be a lot of reading, a lot of reading, and it's not necessarily um, rote memorization, but you need to read and study and become familiar with the terminology of welding and um, the vernacular, and so that when you see some of this stuff, you're not, oh, I, God, we're, I've never seen this before you've read it, you've been through it, you you know what's going on. So that's, you know, the basis of this slide is, hey, read, study, create a study plan, set up a schedule for study, and find yourself a quiet place. Study hints part five, I don't know. Um, I'm kind of rehashing a lot of this stuff uh, going from slide to slide, but a lot of it, I, I guess, can't be understated. So for study hints, Again, don't underestimate the CWI exam. It, regardless if you've been in welding for 30 years or whatever, this test is its not to be underestimated. I don't know how it compares with taking, you know, the bar exam to be a lawyer or whatever, but its I can see how people get tripped up on it. There's a lot of material there, and if you're not a welding person and haven't been inver uh, immersed in the vernacular and the language of welding and doing this, 
it can trip you up. And just because you've welded doesn't necessarily mean that you're prepared to take the CWI. You've got a lot of the background, but you're probably going to need to brush up on a couple other things. So you're going to have to commit some time and effort to taking this test. Don't freak out. This test can be passed. You just need to read a lot and read a lot and read a lot. Um, you need to identify your strengths and weaknesses. Most people are not an expert in every subject. Identify your strengths and weaknesses and go forward knowing what they are. So, you know, if you're not an expert in metallurgy, let's say you've been out on the shop floor and you're a welding guy, you might want to hit the, hit the metallurgy a little harder or might want to hit the metrics. Maybe you don't understand the metric system so well. So do some problems. You know, do, some, do a little math on this. It, it, practice. Um, become familiar with the welding fundamentals. The, the fundamentals book, you know, read through that thing cover to cover. Maybe a couple times. You know, don't just scan through it and think, oh, I've got all this. No problem. Become familiar with your code book. Now, this is, even though what we're talking about right here is just um, section A or uh, part A of the test, Whatever code book you're taking it with, become familiar with it. One of my friends that took the test and passed, he was like a crazy man as far as reading the code book. He'd go home and read AWS D1.1 every night. He read through that thing three or four times, cover to cover. He knew it back and forth. He had his little notes in there, which is allowed. You know, he he just took it to that whole extra level of, um, focus and commitment to pass in this thing. He also tabbed and highlighted your code book, his code book. Um, that's something you need to do. You need to tab and highlight your code book. Like I said, that's kind of outside the scope of what we're talking about here, but it's something to keep in mind and something that needs to be done. How many hours will you need to study? Is this, you know, I've heard, of, I, I hear horror stories about people getting thrown to the wolves where their company needs a CWI so they go out to the shop floor and they get Fred and because he's been around welding for 23 years and they send Fred off to an AWS class the 40-hour class and then expect him to come back as a newly christened CWI and the poor dude just gets pounded well he didn't have a lot of time to study for this it's not just going and taking the 40-hour test it's the people that I know that weren't inspectors that took the test they went and took the 40-hour class, but then before that, they studied like, you know, put in a couple hundred hours of studying over a few months to get to that. So at a bare minimum, I would say you need a couple hundred hours. You know, plan this out six, six eight months. Don't just say, oh, they got a test. Let's go. Let's go next month unless you just know you're going to nail it. My advice is to start early, get some books, start reading, read the you know, welding journals, start immersing yourself in welding, the culture of welding, the language of welding. This is like you know, learning a language or a, for, or a whole other culture if you haven't been swimming in it. Um, so give yourself a few months to take the test. This test should not be underestimated, not by any means. There's a lot of material here. Um, make a study plan and keep track of what you studied and how much time you've devoted to study. I would do that. Um, and don't be afraid to hit a uh, subject a couple of times. If you've got to come back and hit a subject a couple of times and read it and maybe you don't understand it, hey, you go talk to a buddy of yours that's a CWI or an engineer or the welding guru at work, don't be afraid to uh, hit this stuff and talk about it and mull it over. Just grind through it because this is a this taking this test is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So um, just kind of get in that mindset and get your uh, thought processes right and go for it. Okay, for the fundamentals of the CWI and the CWE, this is the breakout of the percentages of what the material is going to be on the test. Welding processes, 10%. Explain flux core, sub arc, whatever. Heat control and metallurgy, 6%. Weld examination, 9%. Welding performance, 9%. Definitions and terminology, 12 
Symbols, welding, and NDE, 10. Test methods, NDE, 10. Reports and records, 6. Duties and responsibilities, 4. Safety, 5. Destructive tests, 4. Cutting, 3. Brazing, 2. Soldering, 1. So, you know, if you got 150 questions on this thing, soldering is going to take up a couple. Would I commit a million hours to studying soldering? No. Brazing, cutting, and soldering? I'd hit it a little bit, make sure I could, you know, kind of dance around those subjects. The bulk of my time would be in welding processes and, you know, definitions and terminology, symbols and welding. You know those big numbers, the 9%, the 12s, the 10s, the 8s, the 6s. You get those down pat, you're going to be in the game. So it's a numbers game. Not everybody gets every question right. Some questions... You know, you can, you can be a guru at welding, but some questions on this test, you're just like, I got no clue. Pick one and move on if it's one of those questions. But this is the breakout of what you need to learn and the percentages and how the test is weighted. So you, your study strategy should be, you know, according to this. You take a look at this and be like, well, I'm not going to really have to hammer brazing and soldering too heavy read through it, commit an hour or two to it, should be good to go. So, but this is, this is what you need to know. Okay, time during the test. This test is like an American football game in regards to clock management. We're not playing baseball or cricket or something. I don't know much about cricket, but I know that game can go on for like days and they take tea breaks and all kinds of stuff. No, this is timed. You got a set amount of time. You need to put points on the board, win the game, blah, 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 all the American cliches that go with American football. It is timed. So you need to have a strategy. You need to be prepared to go into the game knowing that you don't have all night to take this test. So time is of the essence. So take the test strategically. Know what you're doing. Part A of the exam, you're going to have 45 seconds per question. For parts B and C, you'll have about two and a half minutes per question. Parts B and C, fewer questions, more difficult questions. So just know that. To pass the test, you need a 72%. So if you're having problems with a question, move on until you finish the test and then come back to the questions that you skipped. And I can't emphasize enough, take plenty of time to practice tests. In your little hidey hole of studying that you got set up, I would go every now and then and just take a practice test. Download one off the internet and grind through that thing. Don't have books there to look through. Just hammer through a practice test. Give yourself, figure out, you know, if you got 10 questions, multiply that by 45 seconds. So 450 seconds, you know, seven or eight minutes and go. You know, attack this thing like it's it's game time. You know, uh, American sports, basketball and football, at, where there's timed, you don't approach them like they're baseball when you're practicing. You do it timed. You have scrimmages. You need scrimmage time. You need practice time. Can't emphasize that enough. You need to get ready for this thing. So you, your mind needs to know that, hey, I've done this before. If you just go in this and you haven't taken any tests or gone through any test questions or you know, cycled, gotten your brain trained to do this, you could be having problems. So I would suggest take plenty of time to practice tests. You know, it's, it's, this is all about getting ready for, for a game, you know, a test. So that's what I got to say about that. Turn it into Forrest Gump here. But anyways, take plenty of t practice tests. Still part A. That's pretty much what we're talking here. Um, learn the fundamentals. Study the welding inspection technology book. When reading the book, take notes. Don't be afraid to go and spend $4 at the local Kroger or Walmart and get yourself a couple of notebooks, a stack of notebooks. Write some of these things down. When you're, uh, when you're going through the welding inspection technology book or you're watching some videos or you're reading some books, keep notes. Write some things down. That does not hurt you at all. It helps you, strengthens you. Um, when reading the book, take a lot of notes. Don't limit yourself to just the study guide. 
if you got people out there that have the welding, uh, the welding handbooks, don't be afraid to read through those. Don't be afraid to read the welding journals. You know, this is immersion into a, into a culture, into a language. Welding, the welding universe, there's a lot more to it than just striking an arc. And all you, everybody listening to this knows that, but, and I know I'm preaching to the converted, but I'm just saying it. Don't limit yourself to just the study guide. Read everything there is on welding, anything you can get your hands on. Welding and inspection, it's not going to hurt you. Talk to people, ask questions, you know, attack this thing. Put the time into it, a couple hundred hours at a minimum. So um, that's for part A. Okay, part B, I'm not going to cover too heavily. I'm just going to give you, you know, a couple of minutes worth of advice on this one. Um, part B is the practical. You know, procedure and welder qualifications, you should know how that system works. Mechanical tests and properties, you should know what tensile tests are, bend tests, properties of materials, all that kind of stuff. That's 10%. Weld inspection and flaws, 36%. You should know, you should put a lot of time into knowing about all the things that can go sideways and bad in welding. All the welding defects, flaws, you know, porosity, cracks, all that kind of stuff. You need to know what the vernacular is, definitions, the whole deal with that. That's a heavy part, 36%, you know, a little over one in three. If you don't know weld inspection and flaws, you're done. You're going to get hammered. NDEs, another 10%. Read some books on NDE. That's an easy 10%. Um, and utilization of specifications and drawings. That's another 10%. So, but you can see the two heavies are uh, procedure and welder qualification and weldering and inspection uh, and flaws. Those two, you know, 66%, those two. If you know procedure and welder qualifications and weld inspection and flaws, if you get 100% on those two sections, you're almost home free. You just need to pick up a few extra points out of the other ones. But if you don't know those two, you're dead in the water. So that that tells you this tells you what you need to look at. My other advice here would be get yourself some um, fillet weld gauges, a micrometer, you know, all the measuring tools, you know, a steel rule, a small steel rule, all that kind of stuff, and you know, practice looking at welds. Um, cause, and get used to, you know, measuring things and looking at things and measuring welds using fillet weld gauges and, you know, the, the whole, t understand how to use that tool bag, understand how to measure undercut. That whole, that whole realm of the universe is, um, extremely important. You don't want to get into your, uh, exam and be like, what is this tool weapon you tinsel gauge for? You want to know. You want to pick those things up and just hit the ground running because you got two and a half minutes per question to get this. So don't wait till the last minute or go into this test and not have picked up a fillet weld gauge or understand how uh, you know uh, how to measure undercut or any of that kind of stuff. Um, you need to know that stuff. So that being said, it isn't a bad idea to take if you don't have the resources, time, whatever, to take the full 40 hours, I would show up for the CWI um, exam or the class. AWS usually gives like a one-day course on that Friday before the test, and they do the weld inspection section. I would hit that. For whatever money that's worth, I would hit that one at, at a minimum. So that's the advice I got on this one. As I said on the previous slide with part B, everything is done evaluating plastic weld samples. It, they've got little mock-ups of welds and fillet welds and groove welds and um, you have to evaluate them. They give you a little code book and the code book is just specific to that, but there's a lot of similarities to other things. But just whatever that code book says, you pass or fail these welds and answer the questions that they ask you about porosity or overlap or undercut. Um, you need to learn how to use fillet weld gauges, undercut gauges, calipers, and micrometers. You need, if you got to go to 
Harbor Freight and pick up some weld gauges. I don't even know if they sell them. Calipers and micrometers. Go and do it. Measure things around the house. Measure bolts. Measure pins. Measure everything. Understand how to use a micrometer and calipers. Those are easy points. Go, Like I said, go to some low-rent tool store and get something. If you're never going to use them again, go get some calipers and micrometers and understand how to use them. Get familiar with having them in your hands so when you get in there, you can hit the ground running. Um it's practice you have to approach this like it's a game you know you don't want to go into a, a football game and you've never picked up a football or you've never run the plays or you have no clue as to what's going on you got to have a game plan this is what i'm going to do we're going to run a certain dive play or whatever and once again if you're not a football fan and you're not an american and all these uh Oh, cliches are going over your head. I'm sorry. Um, I'm American, and I kind of got to tie things back to what I know, and I guess what the majority of my audience is going to understand and know, you know, that they can tie it to some kind of culturally significant um, event or sport. Anyways, sorry, got off on a side rant. Uh, but you need to learn how to use the fillet weld gauges, undercut gauges, calipers, and micrometers. Very important. Know how to use this stuff. Practice using them. Practice, practice, practice. You don't want to go into the test and it's the first time you've ever messed with them. Part C. Um, this is the code book and applications. Um, materials design is about t materials and design is about ten percent. For I took this in AWS D11. So that's like section two, where all the design stuff, where the structural engineers get in there and dig around, and there's formulas and all kinds of um, stuff that's more relevant to what they do than actual weld inspection. I mean, there is you know, relevant information in there, but it's the design portions. Fabrication, 30%. You got to know how to read and um, understand the fabrication portion of the code book that you're going to be taking it in. API 1104 and AWS D11 are the two biggies for the area I'm in, Houston here. So a lot of people take it in a API 1104. I took it in D11. Um, inspection, got to understand inspection, 25%. And then qualification, you got to know how to qualify welders, procedures, um, PQRs. You got to understand that whole, that whole little ecosystem. You got to understand that a PQR supports a WPS. You got to understand what a WPS is. You can't get into the test and be asking, what the heck is a WPS and why do I care if I have a PQR for it? No, you need to know these. You need to know the vernacular. You need to know the language. Very important. So you need to be very intimate with your code book. Whatever code book you take it with, I, I don't have a dog in this fight. Whatever one you want to take it in, take it in that one. But whatever one it is, you should read through it a couple of times. You should understand it. You should have a notebook where you've taken notes and asked questions and gone to the code guy at work or your cousin Bob that, you know, is an engineer somewhere that understands this code. You should know this and you should take notes and you should read it and write notes and highlight um, particular items in your code book. And don't get crazy with the tabbing and the highlighting because if you tab and highlight everything, then you got nothing. So, but anyways, this is the breakout and that's what I got as far as, uh, you know, information or advice on part C, the code section. All right, buy your code book early and start reading that thing. Don't order it and let it sit on the shelf and then you show up to take the test. And you're going to crack that thing and you're going to expect in the past. No, buy your code book a few months early. Get that thing early and start reading it. Start reading that thing like it's War and Peace or I don't even know why I threw out War and Peace. But start reading that thing like it's a, a decent novel. You know, your favorite Stephen King or whoever your author of choice is. Start reading that thing. Understand some things. Start writing down concepts. Um... Any code book, the big concepts are going to be the scope, you know, fabrication, qualification, things like that. Start understanding those things. 
Um, get comfortable with the fundamentals of your code book thoroughly. Go through there and look at things. I don't, uh, I'm not an expert on API 1104, but AWS D11, they have a section on pre-qualified weld procedures. If you're taking it in D11, understand the difference between pre-qualification and qualification. Understand what it takes to do pre-qualification. You need to understand those things. That's a, a huge component of any test, you know, qualification. Understand how, what it takes to qualify people, what it co takes to qualify a, a CO or a WPS, a weld procedure specification. You know, find and do timed test questions. Like I said, you can find a lot of stuff out there on the internet, dig around, find some sample test questions. Get used to being in a timed situation. Like I said, for part B and part A, this is a game, you know, like a football game. We're not playing baseball. It's a timed situation. Clock is ticking. And at some point, you're going to need to do the two-minute drill. Once again, that makes no sense to anybody outside the U.S., but if you're an American football fan, hey, we need to get, we got two minutes, we need to go down and get a touchdown. You need to get into that, um, get used to being in a timed situation and being under pressure. Maybe you won't be in the actual test, but in, it doesn't hurt to, to be prepared for that eventuality. Part C is open book test. Yeah, the, all the answers to the questions are in front of you, but that doesn't mean they're easy to find. A lot of them are easy to find. Others you're like, I have no clue where they picked out that test question from. Where the answer to that is, none of it. Some of them are just, uh, you get tied up or you, you might not understand the question or you might be looking in the wrong spot. But, um, you know, just because it's open book doesn't mean it, it's going to be easy. They're, they give you two and a half minutes per question for a reason. So just be prepared. And like I said, that timed situation. But if you're, if, like I said, a friend of mine, he, he got really crazy with it when he took it. And he was reading and reading and reading and taking notes and had little notes scribbled in the, the side column of the um, D11 book. And, yeah, but when, he, when it came time, he just tore through it because he'd been reading it for two and a half, three months over and over and over and he'd come in and ask me questions and we'd talk about it and have conversations and we'd dig through it and look at different sections or I'd go over to his house and you know we'd have a pizza and have a conversation on it so you know it's putting time into it and a lot of this stuff isn't necessarily that you're reading it but hey maybe you got somebody that's taken it before you and you can touch base with them and have conversations and you know they can put together a little quiz, but it's time, it's reading, it's putting an effort into it. So I don't know, rant, 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 but I'm, that's why you're here. That's why you're listening to this. So I'm giving you what I got on it. So, all right, one last slide and we're tab and highlight your code book. Like I said before, um, written notes in the margin are also allowed. Um, and here we go. Learn the terminology specific to your code that will help you quickly locate the relevant paragraphs and charts. You need to dig through and understand the charts in certain paragraphs. Some paragraphs are going to carry more weight than others, and certain charts are going to carry more weight than others, depending on what code you're in. So you need to you need to have read through this book and understand. You know, I can't emphasize enough that knowing where paragraphs certain paragraphs are and certain charts are. You got to know those. There's going to be some that are more important than others. And you, you need to beforehand realize that and have them tabbed and outlined and ready to go. So just some stuff you need to realize. So yeah, terminology. A lot of this welding stuff, I guess in closing on this is, you know, knowing terminology. Terminology, you know, pre-qualified versus qualified for D11. Understanding the scope, you know, what F numbers are or how to qualify things or WPSs. There's a whole terminology here that you really, really need to know. And that just comes with time. 
It's like learning a language. You just have to learn it. Learn the definitions. Understand what you're they're talking about when they ask these questions. So summary, you know, create a study plan, set up a schedule for study, take lots of practice tests. You know, read, study, read, read some more, read some other stuff. You know, really learn the welding culture, you know, the vernacular, the the vocabulary, the terms, the terminology. Can't state that enough. You know, put some time into this thing. Realize it's going to take you some time, but it's a grind. It's it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. But if you do that and you attack it that way, you know, there some good things can happen for you. So that's pretty much my summary. And, you know, it's it's a lot of reading and it's a lot of f focusing on reading and talking about welding. But, you know, the end result is, you know, good things can happen for you. You pass the CWI exam, it you know, get a pay raise or get into a different line of work or open up some different opportunities for you. So, but nothing comes for free. So you just got to, it's a grind and you got to commit to the fact that it's a grind, but there's a big payoff at the end. So read, buy some books and commit yourself to passing this thing and some good things will happen for you. When I give this presentation live, this is the point where I usually ask if anybody's got any questions, but seeing how this is a presentation that's on the internet, you don't get that. So if you've got any questions, send me an email. If you have any need for a welding engineer, same contact information. My website is texaswelding engineering.com. My name is Gary Pace.